Hello and welcome to ABA Made Easy. I'm Mauricio and today we're going to be talking about careers in behavior analysis. So with me today is Lisa Guerrero. Today she's going to be talking about um, different career opportunities that you see in, in behavior analysis, what you could do with it, what it even is. Uh, to get us started, let us know what got you into uh, behavior analysis and what your current path is. I was a psych major in undergrad and I was applying to programs in clinical psychology and I didn't get in actually because they told me that I was lacking some clinical experience. So. I got into the field of ABA, doing home-based therapy with kids with autism. Uh, I really liked it and I was kind of good at it, so I kind of decided to run with it. I got certified as a BCABA and um, I kind of wanted to expand my skill set. I knew that I wanted to get a master's so that I could get a BCBA, but I wanted to also add more tools into my skill set. I'm, I'm completing my PhD in school psychology, so I picked up skills in counseling and assessment as well. Um, and yeah, that's what I'm currently working on. <laughs> okay, so that's awesome. And I'm glad you, well, I'm not glad you got rejected, but I'm glad you're contributing to this field because you are an awesome therapist. I've seen you in action. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so for someone who's considering getting started in this career path, mm -hmm. what would you recommend? Where do they start? Where do they go? So really, I think the first step that you have to do is really figure out, like really figure out if you like the field. It's demanding, but it's worth it. So really my best, um, my best advice is to just get started in a place where you can get that direct experience with the kids um, or adults, depends on what kind of population you wanna work with, um, but so that you get that experience and decide if you want, if you like it. Um, once you decide that you kind of want to run with it and get your certification and everything, my recommendation is to make sure that you can get, you're in a place that's going to give you the direct experience hours. So that's working one-to-one -one with the clients, but also indirect hours. So doing things such as programming, um, like making treatment plans and things like that, learning about assessments. Um, like behavioral assessments, but then that you're also getting the supervision that you need whether that is that you have to Like you get it from the place that you're working at or you have to get it through another supervisor that works elsewhere um, There's different options when it comes to uh, I guess like where you can work or get those experiences you could do that at private clinics or at schools as well. You can get experience in schools, like in the special education department in the school. Um, that's an option. So how, how exactly do you find these places? Is there like a website you go on or how do you how do you scope these places out and find out which ones offer the supervision? Also? Right, if you Google like ABA um, clinics, uh, that's kind of the best place to start at. If you're looking specifically for supervisors, it, de it depends on the, the place that you're working at. So some clinics might offer you guaranteed supervision, others will kind of have you look for it on your own. Um, and if that's the case, then you can go on to the BACB website, that's the Behavior Analyst, um, uh, the Behavior Analysis Certification Board, so it's the BACB.com. You can go through through there and you can find different supervisors that are in your area that are willing to supervise. So if you just look for a certificate that has a BCBA or a BCABA um, and they have the requirements that they need to, to supervise, you can find their contact information if they're listed on the website and contact them and ask them if they can supervise you. Uh, it's happened to me time, like plenty of times, so it's not a weird thing. Um, Another thing is now telehealth is becoming very popular. So the supervisor doesn't necessarily have to be in your area uh, and you can set up supervision appointments through uh, Skype or FaceTime, things like that. Cool. Mm -hmm. And I'd just like to add that um, if you are having trouble finding agencies, you could also search it as if you're looking for services 
And if you mm -hmm. use, um, for example, Autism Speaks, they have a resource guide there and they show all the agencies in your area and you could pretend that you're looking for services, but then just call them and ask if they're looking for a therapist or a job or something like that. Okay, so um, would you mind clarifying the difference between uh, RBT, a BCA, BA, and the BCBA? Because I know it could get a little confusing. With yeah, all the of course. <laughs> so those are the different certification levels that the BACB has for uh, people in ABA. Um, the RBT is the newest and I guess the lowest level of certification. Um, and so that, and it stands for a registered behavior technician. So it's essentially the therapist that does the most one-to-one -one work with the client. Um, to get your RBT, what you need is 40 hours of training. Many agencies will spend that amount of time doing your training. So it's like essentially you get, you get the, the requirements that you need while you're in the training phase for the job. You have to pass a competency assessment. So basically kind of demonstrating that you have the knowledge of like basic skills, um, which is done through observation from your supervisor. And then you take an exam, uh, an online exam. And then once you pass it, then you become an RBT. After the RBT, you have the BCABA, which is a board certified assistant behavior analyst. That's a person who has their bachelor's. So for the RBT, you don't need, you, you could still be, for example, in your undergraduate studies. Um, the BCABA has their bachelor's already with ABA, ABA courses, and the required courses are listed on the BACB website. And they have a thousand hours of experience plus supervision hours as well. You need 5% of your hours to be supervised by a BCBA, and then the rest of your experience hours are divided between direct hours and indirect hours. Direct hours are face-to-face -face hours that you have with a client, whereas indirect hours are other, other additional hours that you're doing for treatment, but you're not face-to-face -face with the client. So maybe that could be uh, data collection procedures, um, analyzing data, doing programs, um, so programming or, or treatment programs for your clients, things like that. And you have the BCBA, which is the Board Certified Behavior Analyst, and that person has 15,000 hours of experience. Same thing, it's the same 50-50 uh, divide for direct and indirect hours, plus the supervision component. Um, and but they have their master's level above the BCBA, you have the BCBA D, so that's a doctorate level of BCBA. Um, there's really no functional difference between the BCBA and the BCBA D, they can do like bill for the same codes and do the same activities. It's just that the BCBA D has their doctorate in behavior analysis or a related field, and they've published articles. Um, that are in the behavior analytic field. We don't do this for the money, obviously, <laughs> but like, um, can you go about telling us like what the ranges for the salaries are just for people who are curious? Right, an RBT starting salary is usually like 12, around 15. I've seen it go as high as 18 in different agencies. For a BCA, BA, um, it usually picks up from like the 18, 20, and it could go as high as like, um, I would say perhaps, perhaps $30. And then, Dep oh, depending on the state, depend and everything, exactly, yeah. yeah. And then, and then for the BCBA, it could pick up anywhere between like um, 38 to $60. It really depends on the insurances that you're working with. Um, there are other variables as well. Uh, for example, if you're working as an independent contractor or as an employee, um, things like that. Yeah, and there's pros and cons to working as an independent contractor than an employee, but mm -hmm. that's a topic for another video. <laughs> if you're not just interested in working with children, for instance, mm -hmm. with autism, mm -hmm. what are other career opportunities? Right, so I primarily specialize in so children with autism and related disorders. 
um, but you can always work with adults as well. And so there are different agencies in the community that are specifically for people with disabilities that you could work for, um, or private agencies that provide behavioral analytic services. Um, Medicaid has recently started taking uh, children that have ADHD as well, so it's not just related to um, uh, like autism and other disabilities, now it's kind of expanding to other, other types of disabilities. So those are options. Every public school has behavior specialists or behavior resource teachers, and so those two, those people tend to be BCABAs or BCBAs. You work in a school board as well, and you could also accrue your hours um, at, in a school setting as well. Um, so, for example, very similar to IO psychology or HR things, uh, things of that sort. And so those are people that could be independent contractors that are contracted by other companies to help their their system work more efficiently. And also, it's not only people with disabilities and adults and mm -hmm. industry like that. I've also worked with um, fo foster kids. Yes. Um, so that's another thing. But there's endless mm -hmm. possibilities. You could also work with the animals if you're interested in that, like training. Mm -hmm. It's all behavior analysis in the end. There was a paper published a long time ago and it's the title is none of the A's in ABA stands for autism. So basically with ABA what you're learning is a skill set um, that you can really apply to anyone or anything. Um, it's just that we're really, the, the field is really booming in like the autism uh, niche right now, but it's expanding other places as well. A common question I get, and you have a unique perspective on this because you got your both your BCA, BA, and your BCBA. If someone um, finished their bachelor's, they don't have all their experience uh, to get their BCA, BA. Mm -hmm. Would you recommend they get their BCA, BA, and then their BCBA, or do you recommend they just go into the master's program and go ahead and get the BCBA? That's a hard question. I often talk about this with people that I supervise. Um, I think it just really depends on your situation. If you're in a if you're in a place where you're kind of just in between undergrad and grad school, let's say um, for a couple of months, think something like that. I don't think that it's worth paying the money because you do have to pay money to take the exam. So I don't think that it's worth if it's a short amount of time that you're kind of in this limbo state. I don't think that it's worth paying the money to be to get certified. Um, but I do think that if you were taking, for example, gap years, which is what I did, I took two gap years between undergrad and grad school, I do think that it is something, it's a resume builder, it gives you access to more money, and um, it kind of increases, uh, it's not only kind of like increasing your skill set, but it also gives you more opportunities um, that you can then use for interviews, um, things like that. So th then at, at that point, I do think that it would be worth it to kind of get the BCABA and then pursue your BCBA because it's going to, at that point it would be worth it. But if it's something that, if, if getting your BCABA and you don't have a lot of time to kind of use it, then I don't think it's worth it. Yeah, and I agree. And actually, um, when you're part of the email list for the BACB uh, website, you get emails all the time of job offers mm -hmm. all over the US and sometimes international, like asking for therapists with certifications to come work there. They even pay like a relocation fee sometimes. So, mm -hmm. I mean, once you have any kind of board certification, pretty much the sky's the limit. You have job opportunities everywhere. I'll ask you one more serious question and then one funny question, I guess. Sounds good. Um, so <laughs> if, you, if you had to do it all over again, would you do it the same way or would you change anything in the process? Actually, for the way that my situation worked out, I would do it the same way. I, um, like I said, I didn't, I didn't get into clinical uh, psychology programs and I went into ABA. And I got some really valuable experiences and I got certified, which then kind of gave me more opportunities that then really helped me when I was applying to graduate schools again. And um, every interview that I went to, 
they really wanted to talk to me about my ABA experiences. They really valued that. So I think it really helped me when it comes to grad school and having the certification, having those letters after your name also really helped a lot. We have worked with kids in foster care or just kids that don't necessarily have neurodevelopmental disabilities, um, <laughs> um, but uh, have other needs and I personally wanted to like I said expand my skill set so I didn't want to go into a graduate program that was only in behavior analysis I wanted to pick up other skills like um, skills that are similar to ABA that come from ABA so things like in cognitive behavioral therapy things like that don't reinforce <laughs> Um, and so I, that was really valuable to me and my goals and my career. So I would do it the same way, but it really depends on what, what you want to do and kind of like what your terminal goal is. Great. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And last question, mm -hmm. are you ever able to turn off your analyzing view of the world or are you always analyzing everyone around you? Um, that's a, that's a good question. Um, I do think that to a point you, like, like sometimes, I mean, sometimes you, you turn it off, but honestly, like once you become so proficient in it and it makes sense to you, like once it clicks, it's just something that becomes a habit. It's just natural. It's like part of who you are. And so then you're constantly using it. I use it on my dog, obviously not that effectively, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so it's just, it just becomes ingrained into how you kind of view the world yep. and how the, and how behavior functions really. And so then I think it's really hard to turn it off at that point. Yeah. It's just part of the way we see the world. Though. Exactly. It's not our fault. Exactly. <laughs> but once you, once you get into it, once it makes sense, like it just, that's just the way the world works exactly all right any final words you'd like to tell thousands of people that watch this video <laughs> um, maybe hundreds <laughs> <laughs> no i think that it's just um it's a really great field um i what i also tell my supervisees is that it's one of the most lucrative certifications that you could get in the psychology field so i think it's definitely worth it and just because i'm talking specifically about kids with autism or other disabilities like um, developmental disabilities does not mean that you have to kind of marry that population um there's like i said there's plenty of different options out there when it comes to behavior analysis um it just kind of depends on what you want to do and just kind of getting that experience and then applying it to other populations so um opportunities are out there it's really great and you guys should do it if you're interested in it all right thank you so much lisa for joining me today no problem happy to be here all right so yeah, we just heard from Lisa Guerrero. Uh, if you have any more questions, just leave them down in the comments. I'll try to answer it. And if I don't know the answer, I'll refer her to answer the questions if she's cool Sounds with that. Good. Yeah. <laughs> um, she is an educator. She's an awesome educator. Um, uh, yeah, like this video if you can. It helps it show up more on YouTube and other people can see this information if you found it useful. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. And I'll catch you on the next one. Mm -hmm.